hey guys did you guys know as we have super tuesday today we all have to be humble and bow before a much purer much more fair much i guess healthier democracy than we have here and that is the democratic lords over in the russian federation and their democratically elected president vladimir putin is running for re-election and as they're running for re-election you know there's a few campaigns that they're putting out there to remind everybody about how much they love democracy but something was really interesting about one of the more recent <laughs> campaign ads and that was <laughs> so the russians said they were invading ukraine for a lot of reasons they said it was for denazification while they were sending neo-nazi militias to go fight in ukraine like brusich so i i didn't take that much i didn't you know, I, I don't really consider it that serious. There's reasons to believe that there was regime, there was interest in regime change. They talk about NATO expansion, they talk about a lot of things. But in this ad, they make it seem like the Russians are invading Ukraine and giving them democracy. Check out this political ad. It shows Ukrainian soldiers fleeing a position as the Russian armies advance. And uh, well, you'll, you'll be able to put the story together. Alert, get up. We need to retreat fast. Take only what you need. I said to take only what you need. So what they did was the Ukrainian kicked back his comrade, his soldier, as they're dealing with the manpower shortage, of course, because ukrainians hate dogs they decided to abandon him because he wanted to save i guess the unit's dog instead of i don't know the skulls of russians or so i don't know what it would be oh you brought the dog instead of two extra cases of ammunition therefore die i guess is the conclusion from the ukrainian armed forces i wonder if that was a zaluzhny order that's just come into effect or a sirsky order assuming i i, I mean if you ask the soldiers on the ground i, I guess it would be a sirsky order huh And then the Russians Держу. come. I got this. Держу. Why didn't you leave? I didn't have a choice. Держу. Well, now you will have a choice. Vote. <laughs> Presidential elections, March 7, 15th to 17th. 2024 candidates to the post of the president of the Russian Federation. Wow. Isn't that nice of the Russians? They brought democracy to Ukraine. See, before, this poor soldier was nothing more than a cog in the machine, getting discarded because he loved animals. But now, he has the option to vote for Putin, Putin in a funny mustache, or Putin with a sombrero. My goodness. What beautiful liberation. I... This is meant for the Russian domestic population. This is not meant for Ukrainians. Uh, Ukrainians would watch this and they wouldn't be able to relate to the story. Um, as in like the people in, in liberated Ukraine. This might be intended for occupied Ukrainians, those in occupied territory saying, we will now give you a choice, but I don't think that'll have really any impact on them. Um, from the reports that we've gotten from occupied territories, from the footage we've seen, uh, ballot stuffing is an activity that is occurring. Many people are, are taken from their homes by people with rifles to bring them to the voting stations. I don't think that inspires the idea of a choice like they're trying to present in this video. So I think ultimately who this ad will have the most effect on or may might have been directed towards, it's hard to say, um, is the Russian domestic population, not those in occupied Ukraine, not those in liberated Ukraine or in territories that still controlled by the Ukrainian government, but for those who don't even live in Russia, as the idea that they're going there and they're fighting and they're killing and they're dying, not to conquer land, not in order to, you know, take over Russia, uh, Ukraine because of some imperial dream or fantasy, but because they're coming to save the Ukrainians. Now, you look at Papasna, which the Russians said they destroyed so much they're not even going to attempt to rebuild it. You look at Avdivka, Avos, you look at uh, Mariupol, or the people who are still living in Mariupol with leaky ceilings and with no heat, and some of them still no electricity, dealing with all these issues and the shell companies that have been chosen to engage in the rebuilding process, being horribly corrupt, taking very long times to make basic repairs. 
I think it's, again, it's the idea that they're coming to offer something to the Ukrainians, like they said originally, to come protect the Russian speakers, while Russian-speaking communities are the ones that have lost their homes and have lost the highest amount of civilian casualties. Um, until you, when you go into the countryside, is a little different because there's a lot more Ukrainian-speaking in the rural areas. But Russian speakers have been hammered horribly by this war. And so the idea that they were coming to save those people kind of fell through once we were getting reports of thousands of thousands, the tens of thousands dead in a city like Mariupol, which is heavily Russian speaking. But this is a different angle. And what's funny about this is the idea that they're bringing democracy to Ukraine, because Ukraine has a lot of problems when it comes to democracy. There was a recent a scandal that was being covered by the Kiev Independent about how journalists in Ukraine were uh, had their party that they were having at a hotel bugged by people that could have possibly been connected to the presidential administration. That means Zelensky's admin. That's a real scandal about something that could have been happening about those in administrative positions in Ukraine, possibly trying to spy on Ukrainian journalists. And we only know about this because that audio and video of that party was leaked and published to the press by an account that is by some assumed to be associated with the Zelensky admin. We don't know how associated it is, but it was posting footage of them doing drugs. Now, I don't think I care much about if these journalists, war journalists or not, whatever type of journalists are smoking pot, doing LSD, Pop and Molly, uh, uh, whatever it is, okay? I don't care. It's not It's not my business. It's free time. It's a war, you know? They're not on the front. If they were soldiers on the front line, maybe be a little, it would obviously be different. But these are journalists having a party, smoking some pot, maybe doing some mushrooms. Whether or not that is legal or not legal in Ukraine, which I don't think it should be illegal, but that's my personal opinion. It's not my country. I'm not somebody who's gonna vote on that stuff. Those journalists were in a private setting being recorded and trying to be targeted by those connected to the administration. These are real issues in Ukrainian society about the, the administration and the free press. These are real divides. But when you ask election monitors about the 2019 election that brought Zelensky into power, they say that the exit polling data reflects the actual data of the election that was published by the government. They say that they could not find evidence of malpractice that, that overturns election results. Petro Poroshenko, when he lost that election, he turned over the keys of power over to Zelensky. He didn't try a coup. He didn't try to get soldiers to take the capital. He didn't argue that, oh, Zelensky's too weak on the Russians, right sector, come save me. He didn't do any of that. He passed over the keys of power. Do you think if by some crazy miracle, if March 17th, we found out that actually um, Nepsov or, or whoever ended up winning the election in Russia, that Putin would be like, okay, well, you know, we're putting, here's the keys. Of course, the system is not built like that, but if it somehow produced that result, would that happen? Do we have an idea that that would happen? Of course not. While there is a lot of problems with the Ukrainian democracy when it comes to f a freedom of the press, when it comes to uh, oligarchical control, when it comes to transparency, even though there has been advances in that when it comes to programs like ProZero, on every metric, on every metric, you can use Freedom House, use whatever metric you want, the Ukrainians are advancing in a direction that allows more transparency when it comes to the type of corruption scandals that they've had. ProZero is an example of that. The, Ukrainian gov the American government has helped them when it comes to that issue. When it comes to election monitoring and making sure that there's not election fraud or uh, an attempt to alter the, the results of the election as what happened in Ukrainian society in 2004, which caused the Orange Revolution, Ukraine is moving in the right direction. And it wants to continue moving in the right direction. Its civil society wants to keep moving in the right direction. While the Russians are invading to not spread democracy. It has nothing to do with democracy. This is fantasy for the domestic population. In fact, the Russians installed a senator in occupied Ukraine who's an open out and about fascist who compares Ukrainians to monkeys. Do you think Ukrainians would openly just elect with no pressure on them somebody who thinks that they're monkeys? It makes no sense. Oh, I wonder if DC is going to vote in George Wallace to be their democratically elected representative. It makes no sense. 
And so I look, I I've obviously I feel like I'm kind of beating a dead horse. We all know that Russian democracy is a, a little far from, uh, I guess, the international standards we would like to hold it to. But the idea that they're invading to bring the Ukrainians a choice is just so silly. I, I just couldn't resist. Also, uh, another another uh, film, I don't know if we're going to call this propaganda or what we're going to call this. This is a video done by a Russian clothing company where they have released for the anniversary of Stalin's. Uh, well, I don't know if it's for the anniversary of Stalin's death, but for those of you who don't know, today is the anniversary of Stalin's death when he died in a puddle of his own pee and his guards were too afraid to go check on him and then he died. Anyway, uh, this is an outfit that was supposed to emulate Stalin. I don't know if you guys saw that outfit Dmitry Medvedev wore that looked like Hillary Clinton's pantsuit because it was blue, it looked just like it. This is that. This is supposed to be an outfit to commemorate Stalin and his style during the Soviet regime. And, he just, and this company that was selling these outfits, this Russian company, decided that to promote it, they would have a model walk through destroyed occupied Ukrainian territory posing in Stalin's wardrobe to promote it and get Russians to buy it. Вот бы справить мне костюм себе из Сталина, из мистического... By the way, the song that's playing is like a pro-Stalin song, like praising Stalin, remembering Stalin. По тело тверже стали на сапоги и галифе да в белом кителе И летать бы в нем быстрее истребителя by the way, is that the OC Organization for Sur Security and uh, yeah, this is the OC yeah, this is OSCE. Organization for Security and Cooperation Europe. Sorry, I forgot the full abbreviation. Anyway, Stalin propaganda. I gotta say, if there's one way to make the Ukrainians not want you to come and take over their country, it's to do some Stalin cosplay in the ruins of their former buildings in their homes, in their villages, in their towns. I think that's one way to get the Ukrainians to want you to get the fuck out even more. Also, I wanted to talk about a little bit more Russian propaganda, specifically school textbooks and material, reading material that is given to Ukrainians and Ukrainian school children in occupied territory. So we've covered before different problems the Russian administration has had in trying to uh, organize and occupy territory due to disdain from locals. Uh, particularly, for example, there have been complaints on pro-Russian telegram channels of Ukrainian children and Ukrainian families in occupied territory still wanting to learn the Ukrainian language in schools. In fact, um, when uh, asked, there's even some data uh, suggesting that they are trying to file for Ukrainian language lessons for their students, even in occupied territory, um, which has getting some got some anger from Russian nationalists who said, oh, this shouldn't be allowed. We need to ban the Ukrainian language officially. We need to do this. We need to do that. I don't want to get into all of the details of that story, but I found these images after they were being shared online by Olina Halshulka and others showing that. Russian educational textbooks are directly trying to cite the war and propaganda about the war to indoctrinate those children in occupied territory. So the first image here that you could see, you have the Russian forces on the left here and the Ukrainian forces on the right. The Ukrainian forces here on the right with the EU and such, they have swastikas on their arms, etc. cetera. Uh, these uh, are examples of them forging elections, whereas in Russia, they have real elections. That is uh, what is trying to be shown here through the ballot box and the voting and the Ukrainian Nazi stopping real democracy, real Russian democracy from taking place. Next, you can see uh, how the Russians are, uh, you know, defending villages, defending small towns, defending all of uh, these fantastic village homes, while the Ukrainians are using Western provided HIMAR systems to bomb civilians. Uh, this is saying this is the continuation while the Russian government is a continuation of the Soviet Union uh, the Ukrainian government is a continuation of the Nazi regime is what they're saying um, it's in, it, you know it's really fascinating to me that 
this would be such a problem for them because the Soviet government at the time didn't have too much of a problem with the Nazis until they fought them. They were willing to give them German communists to get killed in the Holocaust. They were willing to help them invade Norway before, you know, the Nazis killed tons of people in Norway, Jews in Norway and genocided them. They provided them tons and tons and tons of resources for the war machine. Hell, when the Germans invaded the Soviet Union, they actually scheduled their invasion to make sure that the last Soviet resource transport goods, the last uh, the last resources that they could get through their trade deals would actually cross the border and they'd invade an hour afterwards to make sure they can get as much material out of the Soviets before invading. So if the Soviets, I mean, even if we took, let's say, okay, fine, Zelensky, the the Jew who in implemented not uh, discrimination protections for LGBT people in the workplace. Sure, he's a he's a he's the most self hating Jew in the world. He's the leader of the Fourth Reich. Even if you would have buy that at its face, why couldn't Putin just do what Stalin did with the Nazis and negotiate with them, send them resources, and give them political prisoners? Hell, if if Stalin could give the Nazis uh, German communists, then why can't Putin give the Ukrainians Yanukovych and Igor Gherkin. Just saying. Like, even in its own logic, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, of course, you can see here, Ukrainian torture. Now, to be clear, the UN has found that 91% of civilians, of people who go through Russian detainment system, face some form of mistreatment, rape, sexual abuse, or torture. Just wanted to show, point that out. And on the left, on the right here, you can see the Ukrainians, of course, shooting at the civilians going out of their way to murder civilians unlike the russians who are going out of their way to protect civilians give them body armor because if we know anything about the russians and how they handled the Novokokovka flooding is that they have a deep respect for human life and particularly those in occupied territories ah man russian education in occupied lands you know i think maybe they should just concentrate on the mathematics by the way i like this picture of the ukraine on the left here which I, I think it's just stabbing baby, it looks like. It's just the stabbing baby image. From, uh, I think it was from uh, the GUR's Operation Stab Baby. I think that was a Budanyov op, actually.